This podcast may contain adult themes and triggering topics. Please be kind to yourself if you get triggered by what we discuss. Also, this isn't a substitute for therapy or counseling. Please listen to the appendix at the end for some of our recommendations for resources that will help you find a qualified mental health care provider. Now, we take you to a time in the near future where emotional abuse has been appropriately deemed a crime and the survivors find a home to reclaim their lives and freedom. This is Haven, and these are the stories of the Reclaimers. Mycroft, may I come in? Oh, Sefi, yes, go ahead. I thought I had that we were supposed to meet today. Did I have that wrong? What? Oh, uh, were we? I seem to recall you needing to meet a lot lately. No, Mycroft, it's our weekly session. You said that we needed to meet... Sefi, I'm in no mood to hear your passive-aggressive overtures. Just confront it. This is our time to meet, and you're late. Fine, let's meet then. What do you want to meet about? I don't want to meet. It's just that I'm supposed to follow the guidelines of reporting that I signed before we came here. No one cares about those reports. It's what we do in session that really matters. You turned in your session notes, right? Yes. Then we're done. No need to be officious. Off with you. Go write another paper or something. I did have a concern I hope to talk with you about. So you did want to meet? Yes, fine. I wanted to discuss this issue. Well, out with it then. I'm uncomfortable with the methods we're using. You. In all your infinite Sefi wisdom, you wish to lodge a complaint about the methods we're using that have taken years to develop. How long have you been on my research team, Sevi? It's not about the research. It's about all about of About what? Your little tiny feelings? Your... Oh, wait. I'm getting that. Uh, your ethics, right? You think this is wrong? Do tell, Professor Sefi. Share with the class how you think that the ethics have been violated. Hmm. Go, do tell. I'm listening. I just feel... Truly, I'm listening. Go on and share with all the mothers and fathers in the war who lost children due to the uh, 13 people you're trying to protect out there. The brothers, sisters, husbands, wives, partners. Tell me how we should serve up to the American public the knowledge that we're holding on to criminals who are responsible for death and grief and pain beyond all civilian understanding. Hmm? Do tell, Professor. Lecture me on ethics, will you? Because I know so little about ethics and how they affect everything. Me, with only a degree from one of the oldest educational institutions in the world and decades of researching and teaching the subject. (sighs) Say it! (laughs) I can hear it so clearly in your thoughts. Just say it out loud, will you? Please, Mycroft. I just believe that if we engage in methods that compromise our ethics, we're turning ourselves into the monsters. Surely there are other ways... How very philosophical of you, Professor. And how did you come to this conclusion? Research? Of the two of us, I have years on your research. You think publishing one paper gives you the right to tell me, an experienced teacher and researcher, how to conduct the needed extraction on a group of the lowest war criminals? Now stop. Mycroft, you know they didn't do anything but follow orders. They were just doing what they'd been commanded to do. They aren't criminals. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) Sevi. Even you admit that juvenile and I... Are you that juvenile and naive to believe that these people didn't know what they were getting into when they agreed to participate in that war effort? Okay, maybe I do. And maybe I did. But I don't now. I respect them. All the more now that I've heard their stories. Now that I've seen their grief, their torment. (laughs) Are you? Sefi, are you allowing yourself to bond with them? Sefi... You know the first rule of a good therapist is to maintain a clinical distance. Especially for someone with your capabilities. You wouldn't want to be exploited by someone who could read you. If this experience has taught you nothing else, 
It's taught you that you're not the genius telepath you think you are. There are others like you. Suppose one should get a hold of you. What you know could become public knowledge, and then the tribunal would have to execute every single one of those people, no. all because you felt the need no. to idolize them. No. Do you see how you're in here projecting your abuses onto me? You're claiming that the ethics are in question, but look what you're doing. You're using your telepathy inappropriately. You weren't brought here to play therapist. You were brought here to read these criminals and ensure the safety of the good citizens of the United States. And if you can't do that... Mycroft, please, listen to me, please. The other day, I went into a group session with all of them, and their hands, Mycroft, they were bloody. Every one of them had injured themselves. They'd done it on purpose because they- I don't fought. care, Sefi! Because I'm maintaining professional distance. And if you had any real boundaries, you'd do the same. You can't care about what these people go through in the name of protecting the public. It's unethical to put an entire nation at risk because these criminals experience some side effects using the methods that have been tested and approved by countless review boards and even a governing body that kept us safe during the war. We now have a duty and responsibility to get the criminals to talk, no matter what. Can you... Can you at least tell me how long you plan to hold them? I've already verified twice now that they don't know anything. We're done. Anything. We're done when we're done. And you don't have the clearance to know what we're looking for <sighs> and what the intended completion date will be. <laughs> Sefi, trying to read me? Do I, do I have to remind you of how using the refusal works? I wasn't trying to read you. I was trying to show you what I've read. Then use the refusal. I'm so tired of having to show you how to do this. Mycroft, I have reason to believe that this method of using the refusal, I believe it's crossing a line. There's a lack of, of consent. And when I use the refusal, I'm violating something. Yes, yes, you're violating the line <laughs> that keeps secrets. You're violating that line the way a soldier crosses a country's border to attack. But this is different. When I use the refusal with you, there's no internal protections for me. A soldier at least has armor and a weapon and the comfort What could of... you possibly need protection from? Uh, haven't I shown myself to be a trustworthy guide? <laughs> I taught you the method using my own thoughts. Why would I do that if you couldn't trust me? I would never do anything to hurt you, Sevi, I promise. I get that. I just Don't want you, you to... trust me? Of course, I trust you. Then what is it? I can't speak for you, that's true. But I've seen what using the refusal is doing to these patients. They're bonding in ways that worries me. and They're attuned to my needs. They're avoiding self-care, and they won't. They aren't holding to those. Sounds like you've clearly thought this out. <laughs> And that you've done years of research to back up your claims here. I don't need years of research to see when someone is wounded by something I'm doing. I can see that what I'm doing is hurting them. It's just basic humanity that any typical ordered personality would feel. Is that so? I'm concerned because it feels like this method is resulting in manipulated attachment. Really? Really. Have you ever heard the term gaslighting, Sebi? Yes, Mycroft. I heard it in your class. It's why I no, think... No, no, Miss Colossi. You do not think. What you do is gaslight. No. You create something in your head, something that clearly isn't there, and you project it onto me. You're in here claiming that my methods, what took me years of 
careful research to develop. These methods that you're so quick to I'm not critique. quick to do anything. I didn't have any concerns about this specific tiny method until I observed Silence! It. <laughs> Miss Colossi, do not dare to interrupt me with defenses. You cannot defend yourself to a master practitioner. I've spent a lifetime learning everything there is to know about abnormal psychology. I have more knowledge of manipulated attachment in my pinky finger than you could ever gain in a lifetime. You claim to know anything, anything, anything about psychology, always professing your views and expertise and experience and knowledge and thoughts and opinions. And where does it come from? There is no range of life experience for you to rely on. Only a single research position with a famous clinician. A heightened gift that you pretend to hold back in order to gain you notoriety in a department that can surely see right. Through you. Do you deny that you are the youngest member of this research team? No. And I'm sorry. You were... what? I'm just trying to put all of this in context. I'm not the clinician you are, and I don't have the experience. I have one published paper, and that was a team effort. I don't have anything to offer you or your team except my observations. And? And... It, it sounds like I need to do more research before I bring you those observations. Yes, you do. <laughs> this is just all the old stuff you've used against me, Sevi. From the beginning, you've been quick to notice or observe, but you've never taken what I give you. You hold on to my mistakes while I give you a chance. Chance after chance to prove yourself. We're here again because you say I've hurt you. Fine, I hurt you. But you hurt me too, sir. And you hold grudges. You never let anything go. You accuse me of misusing ethics to protect the citizens in my charge. What do you have to say to that? You're the expert. Of course I am. And from the beginning, you've held that expertise squarely in your sights as something to use against me. You claim to have observations that mean nothing to this entire operation. You're right. I'll be more careful. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, you will be more careful. As a matter of fact, I think it's time we started having regular meetings to address what you're doing. And I thought that... <laughs> what, what did you think? That's... That's what today was supposed to be. I, I want help. I want to learn how to be better, and I want to understand the research. Please don't yell at me. Don't be mad again. Please, can't we... I promise I'll be a better student to you. I just want it like it was in the beginning. I miss that. <sighs> Do you think that I don't miss those times too? I thought I'd found an assistant who would listen and learn, not someone Who'd call my methods into question? I am. I, I will listen. I want to learn. I'd love to meet with you regularly. 
I'm sorry I didn't approach you correctly. I'll be better about how I bring it up. I'll make it clear I'm asking, and I won't use my telepathy inappropriately. I'll be healthy, and I won't bond with the criminals. Okay? I don't know if I can trust you. You don't have to know. I'll show you. I can change. Okay. Good. What if we start over? Start over how? Today. What if I... Mycroft, I'd like to meet with you today because I'm concerned I'm doing something wrong in my sessions with the criminals. Can I tell you about what I think isn't working and you could teach me how I can be better? Oh, Sefi, of course. I am happy to give you the time you need. Please, sit down. Where are your session notes? Let's go through and see what's troubling you. Better? Don't go seeking praise, Sefi. You know how needy that makes you sound. Just go with it, like you said. You need to show me I can trust you. Of course. I just want us to get back to how things were in the beginning. I want to be good for each other again. You have a lot to prove. But I'm willing to give it a shot. I want to be good for each other again, too. Thank you. <laughs> no. I think there was a spot in the session where I went wrong. It's on page four of the notes. Can we start there? Of course. Hey, it's Percy and Feeney here. What you've just heard is a work of fiction, but we know that many listeners are living in a world of pain that isn't fictional at all. At the end of every episode, we're going to include an appendix of sorts. Some things we hope will serve those who live with a reality of fear and pain every day. First, we want to let you know about our website, www.empowering.tools, where we keep an ongoing list of books, websites, hotlines, and many other resources for victims and survivors of toxic relationships. Second, we love to hear from you. If you'd like to share your story with us or let us know how the episode impacted you, we'd love for you to reach out. These are deeply emotional things and we want to give you a chance to share. We're a small team, so an in-depth response isn't always possible, but we do read every message we receive. Third, if you're in crisis or you need to find an immediate way out, please call 800-799-7233 for the National Domestic Abuse Hotline. If your abuser is a parent or a non-romantic relationship, there are other resources we've listed on the website that are just for you. A reminder, emotional violence is still violence. You don't need to have bruises on your body to deserve help, and it's okay to feel what you're feeling when you call. Fourth, be safe. For some, getting out will take planning and time. If you know you need help, do what you need in order to safely get away. Lastly, We know how difficult it can be to believe there's hope on the other side of a toxic relationship. Many on our team know the devastatingly difficult steps it takes to get away from an abusive predator. But there is hope. You don't have to do it alone. If you don't have supportive family or friends, you can still find support at the hotlines we mentioned earlier or at a local hospital or shelter. Thousands of survivors have made it out. Getting out and reclaiming your freedom can be your story. We believe in you. We believe in your future. And And we we believe believe in your right to that freedom. freedom.